Exactly. And so how are farmers actually making better decisions off this machine data that's collected? G'day and welcome to the Farms Vice podcast with your host, Jack Creswell. Whether you farm it, service it, or just love it, this podcast is for you. We'll bring you the techniques and technologies you can implement into your day straight from the leaders and innovators themselves. Spread the farm's advice so that we can reach more farmers right across Australia. Follow us on all of your socials at Farms Advice and let's get into this episode. Well, welcome to the Farms Advice podcast, Sean, on the Case IH series. Great to have you on. How's everything going with you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, it's a lovely day in Toowoomba, so it, uh, it, it sure beats uh, sitting in the office during the rain. How's Toowoomba been faring through all of these rains? I went through there before and the main street was a river um, earlier yeah. on in the year. Like everyone else around around the uh, around across Australia, it, it's wet. There's yep. rain, harvest is delayed, planting's delayed. I think the guys are getting in the field at the moment. So, yeah, it's uh, after years of drought, you can't complain about the water, but um, just a little bit of a breather would be good to get people back in the field. Yeah, a bit of a switch on that and just needing a few sunny days out in the paddock so we can get a good start, maybe even on summer crops, getting them yep. in as well as the harvest season comes along. For sure, for sure. So, Sean, thanks for coming on, and people love to get to know a little bit about the speaker before we get into agribusiness. Do you want to give us a bit about your background and how you ended up in the role you are in now? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, my um, background is my father worked on on cotton farms at an early age back in uh, Weewall when they first started developing that area. We moved around a fair bit, but was only probably from sort of Moree, Weewall, uh, Rowena, um, sort of that area, just moving from job to job where we, um, Dad settled down eventually and started share farming uh, in northern New South Wales, Moree, growing cotton. So been around uh, the agricultural industry all my life and majority of that was uh, working and growing up on, on cotton farms. Uh, so like every other uh, kid, Growing up on a farm, you're always doing work after school, during weekends and on school holidays, helping out wherever we could. Um, so I did that when I um, went to, obviously went to finish high school, um, didn't see myself as a university type person. So yep. went straight straight onto uh, um, a farm, working as a, a farm hand, just driving tractors and doing all those things farm hands do. And didn't uh, was enjoying it, but just wasn't much of a. Uh, I thought I'd, something different would be good, so I um, actually put myself through a, a course in in North America called Rhodes College, which is a um, international cotton school. So yeah. where I um, worked with uh, worked with um, a local cotton merchant in Australia called Will Brothers, um, and um, yeah, so that's where I sort of started going through that for for cotton classing and and uh, marketing. A bit of experience there, and I think that one going across to America for the cotton schools and out there sort of one. What did you learn from that being more global over there? I suppose. I think the biggest thing was we um so you you know your industry fairly well in, in Australia, but when you go overseas, it just opens your eyes to um. So we had uh, people attending the course from from Uzbekistan, Russia, China, uh, Italy, France, Switzerland, yeah. Colombia, um. Argentina, Mexico. So this is a whole um, wide verse of people, and the way they sort of the, we all had some involvement in farming, but yep. we do it so differently. Yeah, we've got that connection, that tie there, but the way that we do it, our daily routine or something, is very different. Clim- climate is different as well, and how we fit that. But now you've wound yourself being appointed to AFS product manager. How's that all going? Yeah, very good. So then that was a um, so before that I used to work for a, a um competitive product as a um precision farming solution uh, specialist, yep. um, and enjoyed the product, uh, loved being part of the um precision farming sort of uh background. Uh, very excited on what what technology can can give customers and what it can do for machines, um, and that just grew and then. When I saw this job uh, advertised, it was just a. Um, I was very excited to 
to apply for it because it um, giving you the the ability to have some input on products that are coming out and making the biggest thing is making sure customers are utilizing the products they've already got. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest case, especially on the whole of what ag tech is. There's a lot out there, but are people utilizing it too? And we'll get into that with AFS Connect and how it's working. But talk to us about AFS Connect within KSH. What is it? How long has it been around? And how are farmers actually getting the most out of it currently? Yeah, so AFS Connect has been around for some time, but in the last two years, um, we've got the new machines that are coming out, which are AFS Connect uh, Steiger, which is the first machine to come out, then our AFS Connect Magnum. Yep. Um, now we're seeing the AFS Connect Optum. So it's the new um, uh, architecture, so next-gen architecture machine, so completely redesigned. And now we're uh, utilising a new display, which is our... Um, Pro 1200. We're also offering a um, a new receiver, which is our Vector Pro receiver, and then we've got the uh, the P PNCM uh, connectivity module on the machine. So, um, and we'll see that um, that system roll down to all the other machines, so into the combine harvesters, yeah. into now the Patriot with the new 50 series that uh, that's coming. Um, and then we'll see it roll down into the uh, Pumas and Maxim and so on. So that screen, remember going back into AgQuip, I sat down in the in the chair there. That's the screen that's getting rolled out into the Casa H machines? That's correct. So that's the new, uh, new 1200 display, so Pro 1200. It's got a, a very uh, new... Graphics, it's it's bright, it's easy to read in the sunlight. Yep. Um, so it's like a tablet, so you can actually pinch and zoom and scroll. Um, it's just a, a very user friendly display, um, and that's that's the one that's going to be coming standard in, in all the new AFS Connect machines as we move forward. Yeah, well, if you haven't seen it, head over to Farms Vice Instagram or even KSH, and you'll be able to see what the display looks like. It, um, I was pretty amazed by. It looking at an ag quip and how it can actually talk to each other as throughout different machineries. But do you want to just speak to us, break down AFS and how it's actually working, what it does for farmers um, on farm? Yep, for sure. So the AFS Connect machine has a a, a P PNCM, which is a, a connectivity or a, a telematic yep. device. Um, every machine coming into into the country comes in with a subscription. Um, and that subscription allows you to uh, wirelessly send data from the machine to the uh, the portal. So our mycash.com. Yep. Uh, every every customer can sign up for a free account uh, if they have the connected machines. Then they can send data um, with that um, account to the machines, or send the data from the machines to the portal. So, and that's uh, anything from uh, harvest maps, application maps. Um, planting maps or air, air, air seeding maps, whatever layer you want to want to use, that, that information's on the portal. Um, it can be used to uh, quickly generate reports. We can look at real time where the machine is and let you know uh, a brief uh, description of position, whether it's a working or idling or transport mode, um, how much fuel and, and so on, and, and engine hours as well. What sort of data and reports are farmers currently looking to get the most out of? Um, if they're looking, not looking, just a couple that they're needing currently. I think the biggest one we're seeing these days is with the um, the crop scan protein sensor, where we're seeing a lot of people doing the protein map and looking at um, that to um, actually build variable rate maps and put the... Um, Fertilize where, where you're going to get the uh, yeah try and increase that yield and yep. not put it where it's not not going to be uh, utilized um, more so than not wasted but not utilized as um, compared to where you could put it where it's going to be potentially yielding more so that's the big one that we are seeing a lot of people doing that and just a simple simple one of um, your harvest maps everyone's been collecting harvest data for years some people are using it and using it quite well. Some guys just look at it and put it, print the map out and put it in a, in a filing cabinet or in the drawer or 
all of these days, it's on a USB stick and they've never looked at it before. So just looking at that visualisation of the field, growers know their field better than anyone. Between them and their agronomists, they know exactly what's happening, but they just may need to look at a, a map and work out why a certain section of that field is is um, yielding the way it is. Was it um, a weather-related event? Was it a management-related event? Or was it something else? So just giving that information uh, there to look at and quickly make a decision on it. Yeah, absolutely. And for the protein map, I'd imagine that's gathered at harvest time, ready for next sort of season um, and your inputs? Co correct. So the, the, the uh, protein sensor is fitted to the machine and that's giving you um, real-time protein, um, moisture, and then the guys from uh, crop, crops can, can actually, with the Engage app, can and build some um, derivatives of that of that uh, layer as well. So, yeah, very, very powerful product. We're seeing a, a lot of uptake in that. Um, and it, it's yeah, I think it's only going to get more popular as, as um, input costs go up and, and we need to try and um, save as much money as we can and put it into the crop to get the best return we can. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said before, it's a bit of a running sort of map as well. And you don't want to go searching for your USB um, or your print off. You don't want to have too many print offs up in the header as you're going. And if you can actually have that single sort of screen giving you the information, either real time or historical, um, that can be pretty powerful sort of element to the farmer's toolbox. Uh, definitely. And and the, and, the, and every every um, manufacturer has their online portal. Um, we all do the same job. Some have a bit more functionality, some some concentrate in other areas, but it's just giving that availability of machine being stored on the cloud. And the biggest thing is that is it's the customer's data. If the customer doesn't want to share that data with us or a dealership, they choose, they don't have to. It's their data. Um, they uh, When they sign up for my case age account, they actually um, flick a, a a switch on the on the um, portal to say yes we want to share or no we don't so it's totally up to the customer who's, who's wanting to share that data yeah and the way that you use that data yourself um as well i'd imagine good to see for the farmers end of it but what type of farmers are currently using the afs system maybe correctly or currently however you may want to put it like what sort of machinery is it tailored for currently so at the moment it um like i said before we had a legacy product with AFS Connect, and then we've got the new AFS Connect portal um, where customers were putting same thing with a uh, um, broad acre four-wheel drive tractor to a row crop tractor to a harvesters or to self-propelled sprayers. Those, all those machines, um, if uh, fitted with the correct uh, hardware, can send data uh, wirelessly to the uh, portal and then, then, then customers and and their agronomists can make decisions on that. Um, but the biggest one is to basically um, those wanting to maintain and increase the returns and expense of inputs, such as fuel and fertilizers increase. Um, everyone's seeing that, that doing it, and it's just giving you the opportunity to manage those inputs um, at a higher accuracy level to be able to, to do so. Yeah, I think in 2022 and moving into 2023, that input prices aren't going to come back too much. I'd imagine they'll stay up there for a bit. But, of course, I'm not the advisor on, on that and how that happens. But what we do with our product um, can determine what sort of margins we get off our crops as well going into harvest season for the year. For sure. And that's, and that's where, the, like it's now, it's um it's wet and people are trying to get on the on the ground as quick as they can. It's going to have wheel tracks. It's not the best thing to do, but it's, you've got to do it to be able to get the crop in and get a return. So, and that's that's where farming is. It's a it's a tough game. It's um, it it has highs and lows, and Mother Nature throws everything at you. And they, they our farmers are resilient, and they just deal with it, get on with it, do the best they can, and they always get an outcome. Absolutely. So, talk to me about the process of the season. So, coming into planning time, using planning maps. How are these utilised for farmers uh, putting in the crop in preparation yeah, so, to planting? Yep. So a simple, simple one is, and like everything else, before they start planting, it's always they'll they'll get the machine out, run through maintenance like pre-season of the machine, make sure the tractor's good to go, make sure the planters, the the um, 
hoses, check leaks, check ser service um, the machine, make sure software's update. And the most important thing is we've also got to make sure that we've got our display and our portal set up correctly. So make sure we've got the correct field names, we've got no duplicates, we've got our run line set up. If we're using um, prescriptions, we've got them sent to the machine. Um, also, we've got um, the correct varieties we're using uh, set up and, and working. So, because if we uh, do that correctly, once we come to harvest, we're going to get the right information and we're going to be able to know that the data that we've, we're working with is going to be accurate and high enough to give us the detail that we need. So, like everything, pre seasons are done for the machines before harvest, before seeding, for planting. We also got to do that with the display and receivers and any other control on the machine to make sure it's got the latest and greatest software on it and it's going to. Uh, potentially give us the, the best result we can. Yeah, definitely. So we've got the planning done. Um, it's mid-crop now. We're looking to get in the sprayer. Um, what sort of information are we looking there through mid-crop using the Patriot or something like that out in the field? Yep, so with the Patriot, we can, um, we're looking at whether we're looking at um, like a um, weeds, we're looking at weeds or we're looking at fertiliser or yep. we're looking at a fungicide, depending on what they're spraying. Um, but also using a weather station that's on the machine. So just keeping an eye on that data that we're looking at. We're also keeping a record um, of what we sprayed, wind conditions, delta T, temperature, um, because we know that's important to be able to keep that as a, a digital record to be able to prove where and when and what we sprayed. Um, and then we can also then look at, okay, how long did it take? Did we get the target rate we wanted? Because we can look at uh, certain layers as, as a over or under applied, our, as a as applied map, and, and so on. So for that weather, as you get spraying, you hop up in the sprayer. Is that manually input, or that's just sort of connected through? Um, so you have it running on the go. Yeah, so it's a, it's a device that's running on the go, and it's giving you in real time on the display. Uh, what what that what that system's doing? Music to the ears of contractors, I'd imagine, would get a lot out of that. Um, sure. Farmers as well, but when you're in and out of it all the time for contracting, that would be the go. For sure, and it's just that that peace of mind of knowing what um, what you've done as you go back and and look at it. Absolutely. So moving into planning and then harvesting, you talked about the harvest maps. What other sort of elements are they using either real time or historical sort of data that's been collected um, coming into harvest? Um, so the biggest one is, is util utilizing our, our um, online portal with every portal, you get a, a mobile device yep. um, uh, functionality of the system for harvest. The biggest one is looking at where the machines are, whether you're trying to send a fuel cart around to, to all the machines that you've got running in the field. You need to know where they are and you can quickly look at it and it's going to give you a fuel level of each machine. So you can um, just use simple things like that to be able to get you um, more time management orientated and, and um, yeah, just know what you're doing. Yeah, so out in the paddock, you're able to connect the AFS um, to the sort of little dashboard that you've got so that you can keep the keep it all rolling. Um, so before that big rain event comes along, you can actually get in there and feed it rather than having that downtime. I think downtime in harvest time is probably the most expensive time for either contractors or farmers getting it off. Sure. And it's just utilising. Everyone's got a uh, smartphone. Everyone's got a iPad or a tablet these days. Um, and the product has apps, whether it's an ISO or Android app. And you can, yeah, you can use that in many different ways. So like I said, um, whether it's just to manage fuel cart or you're managing loads into certain silos or bunkers, you, yeah, you can um, you can try and uh, get the best out of out of the out of the technology. Absolutely, and so how are farmers actually making better decisions off this machine data that's collected, um, and what sort of machine data is collected off the back of that? Um, so what growers are doing is looking at like, we've bought a machine, we can bring up that that on their um bring up that machine on, on the portal and look at have I got the right size of the machine? Am I buying a machine and am I using it to its full potential? Or have I got a machine that I've 
board and I'm only using 60% of its of its um, capability, do I go down a, to a smaller machine or do I need a bigger machine? Or if I've got a lot of, at, at the moment, hard to find good labour, um, I've got a, a new guy on. I just want to keep an eye on make sure he's not, um, I've told him to, he's got a sprayer on, a, a tow behind sprayer, um, and it's very dependent on speed. Make sure he's he's doing the speed that, that I've told him to. He's not actually, I've told him to work in, in 10th gear and he's working in 13th gear yeah. and, and doing 19 kilometres an hour. So you can just monitor and it's just those that, that um, and another one is with the new, new, new worker, you can actually dial in and look at the display in the tractor from, from your house or from a, um, um, anywhere, anywhere uh, you may have it have the uh, tablet. So just be able to, you can't control the display, but you can look at it and there's a highlight um, and you can say, okay, press this button and press this button. So you can get in and try and um, help, um, help him around the display if he's not, not too familiar with it. Yeah, I think that might be a little good onboarding for any operators. I'd imagine coming into Harvest, people have plenty of new operators coming in, um, especially with the labour where it currently is at the moment. So having that to your potential as well to add that into your own toolkit is pretty important. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. It's a, like I said, the um, onboarding new labour is, is ever changing because um, there's just not enough uh, people on the ground to, to control harvest or planting. Yeah, certainly. And looking at real-time data versus, or not versus, alongside historical data, what sort of, how is this being used real time? You can pick sort of within harvest or planting, spraying. Um, how are people actually using this on the go and what sort of data points are they looking at for real time and maybe yeah, so the, looking at this? Based, yeah, no, so um, like with the with the um, labour shortage we've talked about, it's yeah. important to um, um, increase the, the efficiency, of, inficient, uh, efficiency of the machine. So... Um, machines critical parameters like temperature and speed is monitored remotely and that's um, near in real time so that's the biggest one where they're like making sure they're not um, yeah if they're yeah, controlling temperature and speed and keeping their eye on on because of that like we said always goes back to that labor shortage yeah and then moving into historical this is a bit of a report on what sort of happened and how farmers can use that either we have a planning map, harvest map, or protein maps. Well, exactly. It's like it's like when we come to harvest and we we've got a section of the field we got no idea why it's yielding lower. Yep. We can go back to the planting map and bring up that that planting map, overlay the two, and say, okay, was it? And then we've got certain layers we can we can turn on, so we can turn on speed or application rate or um, or another rate. Um, and we can look at that and see if there's a correlation between something we did at planting that affected that, or was it something else that affected that? But we can rule one of them out by looking at data that we've that we've collected when we planted it. Yeah, it's nuts that you can overlay the different maps and just actually see and point out what's going wrong, um, and then you could probably lift up your yields for the next year and your sort of program for the next few years. Um, and you may not have to spend overspend on your inputs as well because you've actually seen and targeted that certain area going on. Correct. So you spoke a little bit before about customers getting the most out of their AFS Connect and using it to its full potential. Are your customers using it or are they just sort of picking up the pieces currently um, where they are and actually how can they use it to its full potential if they're not already? Yeah, and it's like anything. It's um, you. you know, I know myself. I, I like technology, so I'm always one to try and buy a phone that's got the the all the whiz bang features that I want. And you've got um, other people in my family who have a new phone. I don't really want one. I'm happy with the one I've got. So, depending on what you're trying to get out of it, are we using it to our full potential? Definitely not. But we are getting very. We got some customers there. Are, 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 are pushing us on we need these features because i'm trying to get the most out of it and it hasn't got this feature and then you've got guys who are just starting in the journey um and, and then and the simple thing is if um precision farming it doesn't have to be about uh, recording uh, yield maps 
um, creating prescriptions. It's if you're doing guidance, that's precision farming. If you're just doing a boundary to get accurate yield, um, accurate accurate areas, that's precision farming. You know, it's, it starts in the same. It starts with the simplest things, but it can be so complex. And it's the way we make it. Uh, we can be we can make it very complex, um, or we can choose to do what we want to do with it. And the biggest thing is we've got to realize what do we want to get out of recording this data, monitoring it. We've got to make that decision before we go into the journey to say, okay, I want to do this because I want to um, fix X, Y, and Z. And if we know we're going to go into the journey doing that, then we know we've got to do certain things along the way to be able to give us that. Um, and we're always open to customers' feedback because um, we make a product that's good for um, broad acre, but we've got customers using it in horticulture. We've got customers utilising the same thing in sugarcane. We've got guys using it in viticulture and we've got guys using it in row crop cotton. So it's the one one display doing many different things. So um, we've just got to try and educate our customers to use the potential of yeah. the of the system. Do you think um, simple is best in this sort of terms, starting out with the sort of simple things and also like starting out with why you actually want to do it? Definitely. X, Y, and Z? Yeah, for sure. Like have that have that conversation with, with your agronomist and, yeah. and your management team. What are we trying to achieve? What do we want to try and fix? And you don't have to try and do it overnight because it's and it's forever changing. Because technology is forever changing, but most importantly, our environment's forever changing. We can have um, yeah, floods, droughts, and we'll have a good season. Then we'll go back to floods and droughts, another good season. So, just um, and we need all this historical data to try and um, make decisions on was it waterlogged because it was wet, or was it waterlogged because we had too much water on there and on the field for a certain point of time. Yeah, yeah. I think the more that we can talk to the machine seamlessly actually gather this data, do something with it off the back of it. I think data gets thrown around a lot within agriculture now, but I think farmers are probably trying to actually harness what they can do with that information. And I imagine with AFS, you're seeing your customers actually come through and improve their own operations off the back of it. Oh, definitely. It's just, and it's just as simple as um, where we used to pay a surveyor to go out and survey a field before we wanted to do a, a leveling job. Now we're running over the field with um, RTK and we can collect elevation data points. That's going to give us a very high accurate um, elevation map. And then we can use that map to make a decision on a, um, a if we want to do any, any earth moving. So just simple things like that. It's just the product's designed to do something and we can use it to do so many more uh, function, uh, features that we we just don't utilize yeah 100 and you never um you're always coming up with new sort of data points how many data points is there out in afs to connect do you actually have a figure there is it in the thousands of that being collected I, yeah there's i don't have an actual figure but yeah um there's because uh, it's a we're a global company so um and and australia is only a small part of that global company but we've got um Places like uh, North America, we've got Canada, we've got South America, so we've got Brazil, who is a, is a large farming um, country. We've also yeah. got, um, yeah, China and uh, North, um, sorry, not North America, but um, Europe is very big as well. So there's, and there's a lot of people with the data on the platform. Yeah, well, as the GM, Pete McCann said, um, that it's ever growing and also Australia is a great launching pad for all this development. Um, within Case OH, but also agriculture in general. Um, bit of a stress test over here in Australia with our climate conditions um, and the way that we farm as well and the way AFS sort of plays a role within that for Australian farmers as they move forward as Case OH sort of customers. Exactly. And and to reiterate, that is um, the platform that is uh, my Case OH. It yep. was... Uh, created through a company that was an Australian tech company who started uh, started the platform, which was AgDNA, was purchased by uh, CNH um, four years ago, if I'm correct. And um, we've seen the, the product grow to what it is now and it's only going to continue to grow. So that's, that's good technology that was created in Australia 
for for Australian farmers, and that's now it's being utilised globally through um, um, my case age. Yeah, great to see it be rolled out. So coming into AFS Connect, you've bought a new machine or something. How actually, what's the onboarding sort of process to get farmers um, over that sort of hump of technology? Maybe they haven't had too much tech or they have not known how to use it too much in their machinery. Yeah, for sure. So, um, process uh, like? yep, most of it. So when you buy a machine, um, what uh, what you can do is um, just go to mycash.com. Um, you can, if you haven't got a login already, you can actually go in and create an account. It'll step you through a couple of questions. Yep. Uh, so name, create a password, email address, where you where you live, and then once you've got that um, that set up, once you purchase a, a AFS Connect machine, the dealer will then say, okay, step you through the process. Have you got an AFS account? Oh, yes, I have. Okay, we want to tie that machine to your account. And then once you tie that machine to your account, they can go through and make sure it's uh, set up with the uh, uh, correct naming. So if you've got a large fleet, you can break it up into um, giving uh, names for machines. So it would be combine one through to 10 or, or Steiger or Magnum or whatever you want. And then... Um, They've got all that uh, naming and convention set up properly. And then it's just utilising the uh, portal to actually create your grower farm field. So you're, you're setting up the structure of that, that machine. If you've got uh, previously um, used data from a, an existing machine, a legacy machine, we can bring that data into the portal, um, bring it all in. We've got, uh, we can also bring in um, backup uh, backups from um, farm works and, and so on and then import that uh, historical data as well great stuff so sean within the next sort of five to ten years where do you see afx connect um getting rolled out and also the, probably what's around the corner for it for well fun? we see a lot of um so when i first started working i i remember the first gps system i sold was one hundred and forty thousand yep. uh, dollars for a, for a base station and and a vehicle platform kit now that's coming standard on most machines um we've got um i see telematics being a big part of it so the connectivity part of things obviously in australia being so uh, a vast and a large large distance that um we're going to struggle with that just purely because of um, connectivity. So mobile signal, um, we see, we've seen that um, in uh, farm progress this year, uh, the um, release of the um, Trident, KSH Trident um, autonomous spreader. So that's that was KSH and Raven working together to bring a solution uh, to the table for, for those guys. So I think we're going to see a lot more autonomy coming down the line. Um, how far away that is, um, I think we'll be. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to tell. It, it's just forever changing. Um, but we know we've got that machine. Um, and we're hoping to get that machine here uh, within the next twelve months to be able to show people as well. So we're just not quite sure um, where it's going to end. Well, it's a very interesting space, and I think your role within AFX Connect Product Manager, you get to um, sort of jump over into the different pieces of machinery, not sort of locked in and you get to see what's happening with all the machinery, um, sort of like what the farmer would be doing with their different pieces as well. Exactly. And like I said, it's good. Uh, the main reason um, for taking the job is to have some input into what, what we're actually looking at bringing on machines. So um, uh, for example, is one that we're working on at the moment is um, a ISO bus implement steer. So that's something that we, um, just uh, thought we need to get the product out there so customers can utilize the display they already had yep. and um, use a implement steer. So whether it's for an air cart or a cedar or whether it's for a linkage system for healing up or planting um, or pulling beds. So, or whether it's planting potatoes, but just, um, yeah, hopefully um, we'll have, have um, we're going through field works at the moment, trials, and um, it, yeah, it's looking very, very promising. Absolutely. Well, we can't wait to see what sort of developments come off the back of AFS and 
I think autonomy farmers are eager to see what's happening, but they may be a little bit hesitant um, to actually roll it out straight away. So it'd be good to see the sort of development that's happening on your end from Case H. But for any farmers out there that's listened to this episode, what would be one piece of farms advice you'd want the listeners to take away from this episode? Sure. Well, it's never too late to start the adoption of new technology. So um, don't be scared. Don't be shy. Um, like I said, you don't have to jump in and try and automate your whole farm. Just start with simple things. Um, and I know I've been a, a part of like uh, just some industry um, organised um, precision ag workshops by GRDC. So um, contact those those guys. They do offer workshops um, quite regularly. And they step it. I know the ones I did were um, for precision ag. So still in, in talking exactly about this, how to start. It's never too late to start. Make the decision what you want to try and use and, and, and start working with it. And talk to your neighbours. Talk to the guys that, um, or you, your local dealership. The guys are there to help and they'll point you in the right direction. And if they don't know anything, ask questions and, and ask questions from everyone else because you will get the answer. Absolutely. A bit of peer-to-peer there and also the dealerships are out there to actually help you discover what can work best for you actually at university precision ag was probably the only one that got everyone to class for those lectures um so sure. i think there's a bit of an appetite there for precision ag and how we can improve every square inch in 2022 definitely so sean thank you very much for coming on to the farms Wise podcast and also the case ih series how can people contact yourself for the dealership that you're close with um, about getting into and utilising AFS Connect a little bit more? Yep, so I, I am on Twitter. Um, I'm not as as uh, I'm not as active as I should be, just uh, with everything else happening. You sort of quickly look through it and, and do that. Yep. But, I, but I am on Twitter, and um, obviously uh, dealers can, um, customers can reach out to the dealerships, and uh, dealerships can reach out to myself to, to be able to... Um, yeah, help them with any questions I have. Beautiful. Well, I'll put your Twitter handle in there. That's quite an interesting one and see how it rolls out over harvest, but also for the information to get in touch with you through the dealerships that will be in the show notes as well. Well, Sean, thanks very much for coming on for a good yarn about everything AFS Connect and how it's sort of rolling out for farmers and how they can better utilise their own paddocks. Not a problem. Thank you very much for your time. And yeah, like I said, um, great to be part of the um, precision ag sector and uh, looking forward to many more enjoyable years uh, with technology changing so quickly. It's never a dull moment. This Farms Advice episode does not stop here. Come and join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. And even join our Facebook group. Go to farmsadvice.com.au for more on this episode and spread the hashtag Farms Advice to your mates. If you can leave a review on Apple or Spotify, that will let other farmers find us too. But until then, see you next Tuesday. In the spirit of reconciliation, the Farms Advice podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people today. <laughs>